Thanks very much. It's uh, great to be here back in Kilkenny. First time I came here significantly was in 1998 uh, for the cat laughs, and it was the start of the Celtic Tiger taking off. And it's hard to believe 1998. So we, we got about 10 years of economic boom, and now I'm back to see the boom being reboomed and relaunched again here in the Langdons. And um, I am, as well as being a diplomat and a writer, I am the uh, son of people from two significant rural towns. My mother's from Coote Hill, a town that hasn't done so well and has in recent years and has suffered under many of the things that we've been talking about here today and we'll talk about. And my father's from Clermorris, uh, which is a town in Mayo, which has done well uh, and survived well and, and, and worked on its legacy and, and hinterland. But... Um, I uh, am drawn to this event by Colin Murray's kind in invitation. I wrote a, a series of articles and then I was on TV talking about uh, rural regeneration, regeneration of towns in the country because I really think that we're in uh, a crisis, um, quite honestly, and it's a crisis to which the bubble of the Dublin political media establishment, or what do you want to call it, is blind. And it's been masked by the boom and then the crash. Uh, we see, and I don't have to tell you guys because you're on the ground and professionally involved, we see a a landscape where it's not just the usual guard stations closing, post offices, um, pubs being because of drink driving and smoking ban and all that, but we've also got the churches uh, in decline. We've got so many factors. We've got social media, which allows people to work in the remote part of Kerry, but also makes them think that maybe I can go to other places and do this as well. So it, it's a two-way process. So um, I'll talk at the end about what I think uh, are, are some of the things that need to be done. Uh, but Colm specifically asked me to come and talk about some of the proposals by political parties. Uh, so what is the government and Irish political parties doing about it? And the answer is very little, actually. I know it's fashion to give out about politicians. I don't generally do it myself glibly. But on this issue, it's, it's extraordinary, given how much of our political culture is from all of Ireland, constituency. We don't yet have a political system where most of our TDs come from just uh, the Newlands Cross or the Dublin area, thank God. So despite the fact that TDs and senators come up from the remote parts of Ireland, and they do come from very remote parts, I spent uh, a week recently in Kerry uh, when I saw the TDs and the hinterland they had to cover, despite the fact they seem to be blind to the problems. But there was one proposal, I'll just take you to about two or three different proposals in the government plan. <coughs> so Michelle Mulhern, a Mayo TD, <coughs> her and other backbenchers, came up with a specific proposal to do with bringing tax breaks to businesses and revitalisation of country towns and villages along the lines of, what, not unlike what we've just seen actually, and what is often rolled out on the Living City initiative. And specifically, the plans were for tax breaks <coughs> for repopulation, confined to persons who invest in refurbishment or conversion of existing buildings to residential or construction of residences on infill plots in market towns. So that's not dissimilar to what we've had before. Uh, zoning, uh, too much land had been zoned outside town, town centres and to get that reversed so that it's more zoned internally. And tax breaks are given aggressively and energetically for the revitalisation of space within those town centres and, and village centres and so on. Uh, architectural conservation areas, which brings in the heritage aspect, and then commercial incentives, which are very important, because the reality is that uh, the state could do much more in terms of the uh, preventing rent upwards, rent only, uh, rent upwards only rent reviews and commercial rates, which are still crippling for small businesses. And finally, there was, um, well, services to market towns was a study of that. But this proposal, which is a very laudable one, was almost blindly dismissed by uh, Michael Noonan, our Minister for Finance, who admittedly has other things in his hands. And he referred it to Alan Kelly, the Minister for the Environment, but he has a lot on his hands, as you know, between Irish water and the homeless. So it made me think, is this how policy is created? On the hoof, people at the back of the room looking to get attention for a very important plan. There was no mention of it being referred to Anne Phelan, uh, who I think is a, a local lady here and is also the Minister for Rural Regeneration. I asked Fine, Fine Gaylers why. They said, oh, because she's Labour. You know, is this really where we're at when we're facing this kind of existential crisis in Ireland 
uh, you know, in terms of our countryside on, on our here, that kind of cheap shot stuff. So it, it was, it was, it was kick for touch. But it's coming back, and I've been in touch with Michelle Mulhern, and she's got it back on the register, and with some negative publicity focusing on the minister's help by myself, of course, uh, and embarrassing them into taking it seriously as a proposal. Uh, it is going to come back. But in the meantime, they took aspects of that and put into the budget the £30 million uh, plan. This is mainly a Fine Gael thing. And I, I just thought this was derisory. I mean, you know, we welcome any kind of move at all, but... It was so piecemeal. It, 30 million in the context of overseas development aid, which Ireland gives 700, 800 million per year, uh, mainly to about six or seven African countries. And I don't begrudge that. I have been critical of the level of, of that. But let's just take that as a comparable figure. And you're talking about 30 million, mainly in, coincidentally enough, certain constituencies that certain kind of ministers or junior ministers are in. And it's it just not good enough. So I, I looked at other plans and Renew, a small party, probably not going to get into power very soon, but they have some much more stuff focused on uh, creating heritage belts, uh, the, hub, the idea of consolidating uh, certain towns for certain aspects of certain services. And uh, anyway, it, it's a little bit technical. It's still on the hoof. It's been developed. But I looked at Fianna Fáil, who you would think, along with being Fianna Gael, are the party of rural Ireland. And this was even more piecemeal and after the event and, and kind of made up in the back of an envelope in a way. The first thing was to revamp commercial rates. Uh, so that to, um, Oh, no, that, that was a good one, revamping of commercial rates. And rates needs to be adjust, addressed in anything to do with uh, retailers or small businesses in rural Ireland or urban Ireland. But, but that was a good one. But the second one was to increase, create, increase uh, car parking charges on out-of-centre shopping centres and retail facilities to make more people not use those facilities but come to town centres. Like, you know, this is, this is stick. It's just, you, you punish one, it just, you punish one type of consumer to create another kind of consumer. Um, there was a similar park, parking charges change that they wanted for the very centre of towns, which was equally to drive up um, car parking charges for vehicles that uh, should go to other places if, as far as they were concerned. Um, the other stuff was uh, town teams' leadership um, and tax increments and commercial investment um, to do with specific business projects. And th that is a common theme that is, is good in these political parties' proposals. The other one was a cultural initiatives, uh, which bringing in the aspect of heritage that we're speaking about here today and this is the great thing about this conference is it's not just about economics it's about the uh, rich cultural hinterland and heritage of all of us where we come from and it's only on our doorstep and not only is it a wonderful thing to revive and restore uh, and to honor but it also can be a vehicle for economic regeneration so that was at least uh, addressed but other than that it, it seems that the political parties just think that somehow the rural Ireland will look after itself, that, that these declines that are happening uh, will either be reversed or it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, I got one cynical response from ex-minister saying, look, a lot of peop most people don't want to live, young people don't want to live in these places anymore. They want to come to larger population centres and another few big multinationals will fall out of the air, uh, a pharma company. And like, it, it was almost like throwing in the towel and putting up the white flag and not caring. So what I think needs to be done is an uh, approach where we can't just rely upon the state um, and we have to uh, engender more enterprise and, and commerce. And I know maybe I'm an awful lot of capitalist and free marketeer most of the time, but I actually think it works. And you can, you just it, it's all well and good to for the state and local authorities to go in and, and create these zones, create these conditions. But we just have to ramp up enterprise and job creation. And if there's jobs, people will stay. So one feature that I thought was significant, and I see it's been brought out early this morning, but I saw it in a number of coverages, including a very good article by Michael O'Regan recently in the Irish Times about his own Tipperary town, and also someone I was talking to grew up in Boyle and goes back there, is the stubbornly high level of long-term unemployment. And it, there seems to be a kind of uh, settling into a welfare culture with households which don't have uh, any jobs. And 
a dependency on that and a kind of, well, why should I get off my ass and help to open a new hairdressing salon or get a job somewhere where it's just I have things easy, easier uh, as they are? And apparently, from what I hear anecdotally, a lot of the social Department of Social Protection or Social Welfare Officers have allowed that to happen or not. Or not that they should be aggressively pushing people into jobs, but just more should be done to shift that base because it's kind of massed in the city. I live in North Dublin City and you, you see welfare dependent culture going into a second, third generation, but there's lots of other stuff happening, whereas in parts of rural Ireland, I think it's really there and there's a lot of other things happening. So it, it's an important one which needs to be addressed. I, I said, oh, sorry, yeah, okay. Um, but, yeah, I, I, and I, I just, uh, I, think, I think the macro thing for the government and the state is they should create a minister for rural regeneration, towns regeneration, heritage, the whole thing, because it is, as I say, a crisis. I, I don't want to keep using crisis, because I think sometimes you use it, you become so negative about it, you just talk ourselves down. And the great thing about here is the empowerment, and that last talk by Mary Kerrigan is about empowerment and taking hold. But I do think on the macro level, the government needs to do that, and political parties need to be address that, and the pressure needs to be put on them to address it by, by constituents. But on a level of what we can do, uh, as Mary said, I, I spent a week in South Kerry uh, during the summer, and I was thinking about this a lot, and I was writing the articles from there. It's incredible. You're down in Schneem with the, you know, the, the blaskets in front of you, and you, you would, with technology, you could be you're writing these articles for Dublin. I mean, you make, you know, the walls coll collapse in terms of how you can work, but I was really struck by how Kerry and South Kerry in particular, well, all parts of Kerry, had really worked with what they have. Uh, when you read the history of how hard things were, when you see how harsh the conditions are, I don't want to make glib comparisons to other parts of the country, but I, I would have spent a lot of time in Carrow, Row, where my father lived and where we lived for a long time. And I felt there were aspects of planning in Carrow Row and the neglect of the tourism sector that uh, contrasted negatively with, let's say, the Kerry. They're, they're smart people, I'm not just bigging up any Kerry people here, but they know how to work with the resources they have. And just, I, I think we, tourism is a big thing. I think we can make tourism get out of Dublin, excuse me, and into, every town and village has an association with something historical or cultural that can be arrived. The Kerry people have done a tremendous amount to do that with what they have in terms of heritage and their fantastic landscape. But like I often say to people, oh, you're from Barry Longford, do you know that one of the most famous Christian Zionists is from there? Uh, and I can't remember the guy's name, but he's a folk hero in Israel, and Israel tourists come over. They didn't know. Oh, well, why would they know, you know? I told someone, people from another part of Kerry, that Rebecca West, the famous writer and feminist from Victoria era, came from a small town in North Kerry. They didn't know. I mean, create a summer school, a plaque. I don't know. I, I don't have all the answers, and I'm just a, a, a journal and commentator. But I do think, on, on, on a level, the heritage and the local history, and, and finally, just to leave on this, the diaspora and the gathering. I think it's a shame that this the state or the government has decided that the, the gathering should be a one-off thing or maybe every four years. I'd nearly have it every two years or every year. Every single Irish town and village has sent people to America, to Australia and to England where they've done well or their descendants have done well. Let them come back, invest here or even visit. Even a few visitors, it creates a bit of energy, it creates a bit of commerce and uh, look, it's from the bottom up and it's from the top down but the government definitely need to do more and political parties need to do more to, to law this. So I wish you luck to the best of luck today. Thanks a lot.